get started, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Jian Xu, and some of you probably know me if you're new. Um, I uh, work for the past 20 some years at a company called Lockheed Martin. And so I was an IT, uh, um, I worked for the IT company and uh, ascended to a senior director level uh, in charge of our company's uh, air traffic control systems around the world. Now, with the pandemic, and do you notice any air traffic in the air? So a job that I worked for 20 some years, thinking that this is something I can retire on, all of a sudden, because of the changes brought on by the pandemic, uh, most of our international contracts um, issued stop work. So um, I actually went through quite a transition in the past year, but uh, very fortunate uh, prior to uh, the uh, COVID-19 era, um, I actually decided um, to uh, join New Skin in August 2019. And that's because some health scare at the time that I was diagnosed with high cholesterol, pre-type 2 diabetic, and my uh, diet and my lifestyle was just simply not sustaining me uh, to continue at my then job. So I decided to choose a different direction, join New Skin, because I want to be healthier and I want to be prettier. You know, I want to take care of myself in general. So that was uh, 2019. And until now, it's almost coming up, you know, year half uh, inching towards two years. And I've learned so much. So I am so grateful that I can share some of this knowledge I acquired along the way, totally different from air traffic control, different from IT, but nevertheless, um, I'm very, very interested in, and I think I'm getting better um, at the knowledge side. So I want to share that with you today. Today, my topic is gonna to be on nutrition. And, um, you know, we all eat food, right? We eat three meals. We snack in between the meals. Um, we gain weight sometimes, and we lose weight sometimes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but as we age, a lot of us become kind of like healthy, but not really healthy. We develop symptoms like, um, you know, don't sleep through the night, or um, just feel fatigue all the time, or, you know, just not enough energy. I don't know why. And then there's all these little things that goes wrong. And we don't know what's happening with ourselves. We thought, oh, it's just getting old, part of getting old. Actually, um, as I dive deeper into, you know, what makes us, what makes um, up our body and what we eat, actually what we absorb determines in the very large regard how healthy we are. So today, I want to bring you a very important subject, nutrition. And so the topics I want to cover today, I want to dive into macronutrients and micronutrients. I know those are big words, <laughs> but they're really, really simple. And then functions of macronutrients, functions of micronutrients. This reminds me of my college years where I dive into what I, I study like macroeconomics and microeconomics. And actually when it comes to nutrition, uh, it also gets divided into these categories. Um, then the spectrum of health, you know, what makes us healthy? Um, what role does nutritional supplements play in this whole spectrum? And what supplements should one take? And uh, ultimately it is your choice. You know, how you take care of yourself, what food you choose is really completely up to you. All right, so macronutrients. So can someone tell me um, what are considered macronutrients? Maybe go back up. Anybody, you can unmute yourself. And I hope this can be a interactive kind of uh, discussion. JR, JR, you there? I'm here. Can you tell me what are some of the macronutrients? 
Uh, carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Good. Wow. Hundred percent. You got it all right. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I I study nutri animal nutrition. <laughs> for, cow, for cows and goats, but it's the same for humans. So. <laughs> okay, so I picked the right person to ask the question. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So JR is absolutely right. The macronutrients include protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Now, let's talk about uh, protein. Um, when we think of protein, right, I want everyone to remember that this is not a primary source of energy, like uh, carbs or fat. It's not an energy source. However, it is literally what makes up a human body, okay? Everything from muscle, bone, to cellular, mechanics, hormones, neurotransmitters, and, you know, immune, our immune system. Everything is made up of protein. When we take protein like chicken or fish, it gets goes through our digestive system and breaks down into amino acids. There are 20 amino acids that our body needs to resynthesize into new protein formats, like the membranes of our cells, or hormones, or enzymes, for muscles and bones. So we break down whatever we eat, like chicken, and turns into amino acids, and those amino acids actually get resynthesized into our body, okay? So that's why protein is so important. So when you consider the quality of protein, you need to remember the number of essential amino acids contained within that protein and how easy it is absorbed by the body and also um, look for those food that are more complete in terms of the uh, number of essential amino acids it has. So in general, uh, animal protein are more complete and uh, uh, veg vegetable uh, protein, not a uh, plant protein, sometimes represents um, not so complete uh, set of amino acids. That's why you need to probably eat different forms of vegetarian or plant-based protein. And another great way to uh, supplement your protein intake. A lot of times we probably don't have the time to prepare. We don't have, um, you know, the right amount of protein in our diet and to take some protein supplement, which is very complete. Usually they all come, come in forms of like out of the 20 um, amino acids, most of them come in 15, 18, some 20 complete um, amino acids um, in, contained in just a little scoop of protein powder. Those are really great supplements that we should consider for our daily diet. You know, when people think about, oh, that's none of my business, that's for athletes. No, it's for everybody. So those are some very simple facts. Now, how much do you take protein? It ranges from 1.2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. And it's great. It's better if you take it three to four times a day because protein get digested and processed through our system every three to four hours. So think about that. For me, like if... Uh, you know, um, uh, normal weight for me probably is like 60 kilograms. Then for me, I should take around 72 grams of protein up to 120 or 130 uh, grams of protein. So it depends on how much activity I'm doing. If I'm doing muscle building, etc. you can vary in terms of the amount of protein you take. So protein, the number one nutrient macronutrient you need to pay attention to. The number two, and it comes with so much misunderstanding, is carbohydrates. And carbohydrates is a primary source of energy for our body. So a lot of times, you know, people go on a diet and say, oh, you know, just eliminate a carbohydrate. Guess what? You're also eliminating the energy source. 
And sometimes, for instance, if you want to go for exercise or something, your body really do need the energy. And if it doesn't have it, you're going to go into fatigue much sooner. Your performance is going to be affected. Now, so it is a very important macronutrient. Okay. Now, when we take carbohydrates, um, the carbohydrates get broken down into monosaccharides. So they're basically single sugar uh, molecules. And there are three categories, glucose, fructose, and galactose. So galactose, the third one, comes from dairy products. And glucose can be immediately used to fuel your muscle. It's an immediate source of energy, goes into bloodstream, and can be used immediately. However, fructose is stored. It doesn't actually go into bloodstream. It goes straight to your liver, um, and it gets stored in your liver or your muscle as a stored energy source called glycogen. So when you think about that, if a person is already kind of overweight and may be suffering from a fatty liver, if you take a lot of carbs, if you take a lot of high sugar diet, the fructose, the, first of all, the glucose that doesn't get used will be stored through insulin, right? Right. It's going to channel it to your muscle and liver gets stored. And the fructose you take, a lot of times those comes in the form of added sugar, will go straight to your liver and muscle gets stored. So that person will actually get fatter, fattier fatty liver. So that is why there's so much misunderstanding about carbohydrates like, oh, you should just eliminate all carb. Actually, no, depends on who you are, what your body condition is. You got to kind of be careful, you know, because carbs do is a main source of uh, your body's energy. If you only eat protein, you're not going to get enough energy. But of course, if you have a huge stored fat reserve, yes, you want to reduce your carbohydrate intake and turn your body on. Uh, to burn those fat into you into using those fat as energy. So this is very interesting because I didn't understand this. So for me, for instance, when I had high cholesterol, pre-type 2 diabetic, I was actually already on the way of insulin resistance. And probably my liver was already getting uh, affected because otherwise I wouldn't be having high cholesterol in my bloodstream. So for me, my beginning, you know, uh, measures of taking age lock TR90 was to reduce, car reduce carbohydrate intake. And that helped me to start losing fat and turn my body into a more efficient fat burning machine right away. So those are really cool facts. Now I understand why this is happening. Now, the third kind of carbohydrate is fiber. And fiber is actually not an energy source. It doesn't provide energy. So it has very little calories. And some forms of fiber are uh, soluble, okay, in our like uh, digestive system. Um, however, they kind of expand. So it, they give you a sense of fullness. That's why if you eat high fiber food, you don't feel so hungry. The other kind of fiber is indigestible. So it's not soluble. And this actually helps your, you know, health of your gut and everything. So it has a lot of health benefits. So that's why we want people to eat more vegetable that are high fiber and also have carbohydrate in there instead of the grains, right? So we want to take more fiber. And then the food uh, has, you know, when you measure if it's good carb or carbohydrate you should take or not take, one way to, dis to, to decide is the, the glycemic index, GI score, what we call, right? If you take something that have a very high GI score, for instance, um, just compare potato and yam. Um, contrary to my understanding, actually potato have more starch and have higher GI score compared to yam. I didn't know that. Or if you compare like white rice versus brown rice, obviously white rice processed has more sugar and higher GI score. So when you select your carbohydrate, 
you want to go for the lower GI score carbs, higher fiber carbs, um, and also you want to take the natural forms of carbohydrates like vegetable, like whole grain, and instead of the added sugar like corn syrup or cane sugar, brown sugar, any form of sugar, those just go straight to your storage, okay? So these are all very interesting facts for me. Now, if you want to know like how much carbohydrate you should take a day, the uh, USDA, uh, gov US government recommended amount is 130 grams per day. Now, of course, if you're already overweight, you're trying to lose weight, maybe you don't need 130 grams. So it's up to each individual. Now, the third macronutrient is fat. Now, fat is a major source of energy. In fact, per gram of fat contains nine calories. Compared to carbohydrate and protein, each gram contains only four calories. Fat is a very high caloric food, okay? However, you can't not eliminate fat either because you need fat, for instance, to metabolize fat-soluble vitamins. There are some vitamins um, in general, A-K-E-D, that have to be absorbed when fat is around. Otherwise, your body just get rid of it, right? So you do need some fat. And also, um, the fat under our skin has a function. It provides heat insulation for the body. And you will notice, you know, I noticed this, like when I get on the ski slope, when, you know, when I was, you know, have very little body fat when I was young, I get cold very easily. I have to take more breaks. And that's what's happening, right? Because you're, the fat has a purpose also in our body. So how much should one take in terms of fat? Um, the U.S. dietary guideline recommend 20 to 35% of total daily calorie. So this is interesting, right? You can actually calculate this for yourself. If you're on a diet, let's say um, you are on a 2000 calorie diet and you can basically con convert it into how much fat you can take. So if it's 2000 calories and 20% of that calorie, let's say, is from fat, then that means 400 calories should come from fat, right? Take 400 divided by nine calories, okay? Then it gives you about 40 grams or a little bit more than 40 grams of fat you need to eat every day. That's actually a lot if when you come to think about it, it's a lot of fat actually. Um, so you want to take the good fat, right? You want to take the fat from nuts or seeds or fish like high omega-6 um, fat, like from salmon or some uh, cold pressed uh, oils like olive oil, etc. cetera. Um, you just don't want to take like um, animal fat or um, trans fat. Trans fat is totally bad. Don't go for that. Read the labels and don't, don't, don't use that. Actually, um, the recommended if you take like say 20 to 35% of total daily calorie from fat, you got to make sure that um, the um, only 10% or less are coming from saturated fats. So if you say, oh, you know, fat is good, so I'm just going to eat fatty steak and lots of saturated fat, that's actually not good for you, okay? That's going to pop up your cholesterol. Or if you are like some people thinking, oh, I can just take like keto diets and I can eat all the fat I want guess what? In a month or two, your cholesterol is going to go through the roof and your liver is going to overwork. Um, so pick the right fat is also important. So they were interesting. Like when you think about these macronutrients, the different groups of macronutrients, each of them is serving a vital um, function for our body to, um, to, to be healthy, to you know, so you need to kind of think when you plan your meals, think about, you know, the percent of calories from each of these sources um, should come from. You can actually calculate for yourself, like how much um, of each 
uh, category of new macronutrients you should take. Very interesting stuff. All right. So now we are getting into the micronutrients. Oh, wow. I listed them all. It's a lot, right? And when we think about micronutrients, these are things that compared to the macronutrients, they're very, very, very small quantities, okay? We're talking about maybe milligrams or grams. So basically they're in all the food we eat, okay? If you have a balanced diet, I don't know if anybody these days do have that, you're going to have a very, um, uh, you know, diverse source of micronutrients in your diet. So in general, you will be fine, okay? Uh, you probably don't need supplements. And most people probably go through their life never worried about supplements. However, because this is not a precise science and everybody have certain food groups or cooking, ways of cooking or or just selection of food when they go to supermarket, you do not know if in your diet, any elements of these micronutrients are not sufficient. There's no way to know. Why? Because our body is very, very smart. Each of these micronutrients have a purpose, have a function. It's helping our body to do something. Now, when you do not have enough of something, what does the body do? It robs, it robs it from one function for another. So for instance, um, let's say magnesium, um, important for muscles since it is. So, but losing some muscles, not big deal. If I need this in some other function, what's the body gonna do? It's gonna prioritize it. Okay, any long-term benefits, it's gonna sacrifice to supply for the near-term immediate needs of your body. So what happens in the end is you will function okay, maybe not sick yet, but long-term, if you are deficient in any kind of these micronutrients, you will have a longer-term condition developing in the background until one day it becomes, voila, a disease. And this is why micronutrients is very, very important. Now, uh, you may want to know like, okay, so let's uh, play a game. Like what, what, what do these things do? I don't know. You tell me vitamin B1, vitamin B2, B3, there's a lot. So what do they do? Now, let me share with something uh, something else and see if we can get into a cool, fun game. All right. Now, um, anybody can volunteer to uh, play and, uh, and uh, we'll see if uh, we can uh, get some right answers, okay? So let me see if I can get there, share screen. All right. So like some of you may have known that I have, um, uh, pursued a uh, nutrition uh, coach certification with NASM, NASM um, National Association Academy, National Academy of Sports Medicine. Um, so this is one of their um, quiz. <laughs> and uh, and I, when I was studying it, I complained about these kind of quizzes because guess what? Here's what they do. On the left side, they, they give you all the water-soluble vitamins. On the right side, it gives you all the benefits of each vitamin will provide for a human body. So our job, the quiz is testing is match the left column with the benefit on the right side. So anybody want to volunteer for B1? What is the one thing that B1 helps our body to do. Not asking for anything else or anything on the left column from B groups of B vitamins to folate to vitamin C, colon, anything. If you can pick one and we will match it and see if you get it right. 
Anybody want to volunteer? JR, you want to start? It's okay. If you get it wrong, we'll just reset. I'm, I'm walking and I don't have my glasses on to read everything <laughs> in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyone who can see this can uh, volunteer, want to volunteer? So um, that's just, uh, I will read some of these, like um, the number one benefit on the top on the right column, involved in many different metabolic processes, including DAA, DNA synthesis, red blood cell production, and in maintaining proper neurological function. And by the way, I don't have the standard answer. After I took the test, I gave everything back. <laughs> okay, for instance, B1, does, is B1 involved in red blood cell production? Or is B1 involved in transfer carbon dioxide molecules and the metabolism of carbohydrates, fatty acid, cholesterol, and amino acids? Wow. Nobody? Nobody want to volunteer? How about this easy one? Here's a benefit. Helps maintain the anti antioxidant system and minimizes disease risks. Vitamin C? Let's see. Vitamin C. Bingo! You're right! Woohoo! Well, if we give a prize, JR is going to win a prize for the day. All right, the next one. Critical in the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Which B vitamin or, or folate or colon? Vitamin C is out of the selection right now. Critical in the metabolism of proteins, Carbohydrates and fat. Might be wrong, but choline. Let's see. Choline. Oh. Selected. Wow, you're right. Correct. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No. Incorrect. I'm sorry. Incorrect. Malfunction. Choline. Choline is not critical in the metabolism of protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Hmm, colon. Actually, I don't, I don't remember the answers anymore. Critical in the metabolism of sugar involved in breakdown, glucogen, placerol, charging higher. Oh, colon, gene expression? Let's see, yeah. Colon plays a role in changing how your genes are expressed by adding specific tags, menthol groups to your DNA. That's why choline is so important. That's why we have choline in the mighty mind. So I'm not gonna keep playing this, but you can see that each of these elements have a critical role in our body function, very important body function at the molecular level. Basically that is the importance of micronutrients. So I'm not going to belabor through all this. There is the fat soluble nutrients like AKDE, just like I mentioned, if you don't take enough fat, it's not gonna help absorbing these vitamins. And then there's also critical minerals like um, magnesium, sodium, calcium, iron, potassium, etc. So each of these are taking care of some vital functions of our body. So micronutrients, if you know, even those small quantities plays just as big or maybe sometimes even bigger role in preventing diseases and give people body um, normal functions. So here are some of the um, recommendation. This is the USDA guideline for keeping a balanced meal and what a balanced meal means. Basically, we're talking about four servings of fruits per day two and a half cups of vegetables per day, 
and they even specify what kind of um, vegetables, like dark green vegetables or um, orange vegetables, uh, beans, starchy vegetable, et cetera, et cetera, on a weekly basis, okay? So two and a half cups per day and, and times that by seven days, it even breaks it down for people like how many cups of beans you should have, how many cups of dark leafy vegetable you should have. It also tells people to take three ounces of grain, 5.5 ounces of meat and poultry, three cups of dairy, and six teaspoons on oil per day. So this is the USDA guidelines. And when you read these guidelines, this is sort of like a gene gene generic guideline fit for all kind of thing. But don't take it on the surface because you know your body, you know what your body shape is. And so you decide to add, subtract based on you know, what your body really needs. And this is sometimes where the dietitian or nutrition coach comes into play is where they will assess your body's needs and recommend the balanced diet for you, specifically customized design for you, right? Um, so, but here, you know, to take, to, to take this, um, to have this balanced diet, um, it also stresses that the vitamins and minerals are essential nutrients the body relies on to sustain life, prevent disease, and promote overall health and well-being. Sufficient quantities can be obtained through a balanced diet that contains fruit, vegetable, nuts, or seeds, and animal meat, dairy, shellfish. In addition to these dietary guidelines, supplementation is often viewed as an insurance policy for a diet that may not meet all of the recommendations. Supplementation should be a targeted intervention that is utilized after a proper assessment of nutrient status is conducted. So this is not Jan's words. This is words from NASM, from the training courses they give to the coaches. So I was pretty happy when I read about read this that I think the health community is not a, averse from taking supplements or recommending supplements. Um, rather, they view it as an insurance policy, and which is consistent with how I view the supplements I take every day. Because with my busy lifestyle, I just cannot guarantee. I'll be able to meet this USDA guideline. And by the way, the guidelines often is just to keep you going. It's not the ultimate, ult, optimum health that, that, that the guideline will get you. So having the supplementation, providing that insurance for me personally, that guarantees I am having, getting enough of all these micronutrients that I may not get from my diet, is really something makes me more at peace with my choice, right? So this is really, you know, the, the message I want folks to uh, take away from today, if nothing else. Um, and here are some graphs. This is uh, the aging effect, right? So as people age, we, our metabolism decrease. This is a known fact, and these are studies um, that have collected data for both men and women. And also, as your metabolism drops, your intaking of calorie also drops, which makes it more difficult for someone to maintain a balanced diet because you're basically eating less. So it is very necessary, you know, regardless of how much you're eating, how you're, you know, at what age, what stage of the life, it is very necessary for a person to make sure um, the, the, the necessary vitamins and minerals for the appropriate life stage, especially in an aging population is met. So that is very important. Now, what's the um, effects, right? Um, what, what is considered healthy? Just like I said, Sometimes when you're not sufficient, you're not taking sufficient nutrition, 
um, you're not going to get sick immediately. I've never seen anybody who said, oh, I didn't eat lunch and then I get heart disease. No, it doesn't happen, okay? However, it happens over time. And so when there are three stages for a person, you know, pathology is when you're already getting sick, okay? You're already diagnosed with something. And for instance, cancer, it's not like uh, yesterday I was healthy, tomorrow I get cancer. No, it's probably seven years ago, cancer is already developing in your body. And then seven years later, it got caught. So that's pathology. Now, most people stand in the transition zone, meaning not completely healthy, but not sick yet. They're not caught yet. So you're going to have some chronic conditions like fatigue, mood disorder, bloating, or, you know, sleeplessness or something. Um, and uh, like me, pre-diabetic, I'm not diabetes two, type two, but I'm pre-diabetic. So we're basically a lot of people, majority of the population is probably walking in that transition zone. What we really want to get to is the optimal well-being no negative signs or symptoms. Once again, no negative signs or symptoms. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And, and the most easy, simplest way to get there is to get on a balanced diet and get balanced nutrition, both macronutrition and micronutrition. Okay, so um, I would like to like when you think about the stages of supplements, right? We talked about um, supplements in the insurance policy. So this idea of supplementation is really not foreign to human being, okay? Ever since the primitive ages or agriculture ages, people have been using like herbs, drinking herbal soups, or cook, add something to their food, like spices. A lot of these spices actually have lots of um, uh, micronutrients. Um, so those I consider are early stages. And then in the past, maybe 40, 50 years, people start to realize antioxidants like vitamin C, uh, red drinking a glass of red wine or taking green tea, drinking green tea will actually help to strengthen the body's antioxidant levels. And then the most recent, maybe 10 to 20 years, is um, we're looking into anti-aging gene expression, like choline. If it's so important, why can't we just strengthen that or take some of those supplements? And with Pharmanex um, supplementation, we're actually at the cutting edge of anti-aging, addressing gene expression with complex forms of supplementation that we're able to decide which element of certain nutrition combined can have the most effect on a human gene expression or on thousands of human gene expression where it's going to boost our body's self um, uh, repair mechanism and get us quicker to a more effectively and safely to an optimal health state. So that's bottom line is when you select supplementation, when you say, oh, there are so many choices, what should I do? I go for the most advanced, the most value add and the most safe and the safest and most effective. So those are my criteria. So what I want to leave you is to look into, look more into the um, supplements provided by uh, Pharmanax, New Skin, the pharmaceutical grade, advanced anti-aging choices, and the choice is yours. And if you want to know more about these products, you're welcome to come back to another session where we're gonna talk, talk more about what is anti-aging, what is genetic expression, what is life pack nano, and what is G3, and what is the immune booster. So stay tuned, all right? Thank you so much.